diet is basically more related for human nutrition because we as animal nutritionists, we always formulate diets based on the digestibility of amino acids. And that's what we were trying to pass on the human industry because most of uh, nutritionists, they use protein as main value main main value of a meal, for example, and we know that we don't need protein, we need amino acids. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Natalia Finelli, a PhD student at the University of Illinois. So Natalia, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Sure. Thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here today. Um, I come from Brazil and I I grew up in a small city inside of the Sao Paulo state. I pursued my bachelor's degree in animal science and at the Sao Paulo State University. I don't know if many of you know that university that is uh, located in Jabuticabal, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, and I did my bachelor's degree in 2014 and I graduated in 2018. And after that time, um, I, I didn't know if I wanted to pursue my master's degree or not. So I got an invitation to work here at the University of Illinois with Dr. Stein. Um, and I came here and I worked here for three years before I started my master's degree. And I just finished my master's degree two weeks ago. So <laughs> I just started my PhD. And I mainly work with protein quality, evaluating, uh, evaluating protein quality for humans using the pig as model. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Awesome. So I kind of wanted to talk about that because the work that you've done in your lab is a little different than some of the work that we typically talk about on this uh, podcast. Because some of the work that you've done, you've been using pigs as an animal model to determine amino acid scores for human food. So I guess as it relates to this podcast, why did you choose pigs to use as an animal model? And what similarities do pigs have when doing research for human nutrition? So we usually use pigs um, because in the past, we we usually use rats uh, for measuring digestibility for humans. However, the rats are not considering a good model when it comes to amino acid digestibility. First, because they have uh, a lot of uh, high requirements for different amino acids for the four and physiological differences in, in their intestines. So um, the pigs are considered a better model for uh, amino acid digestibility. And it's also easier to collect uh, digestib- uh, ileal digestibility from pigs rather than rats, because usually when we measure amino acid digestibility in rats, we usually have to kill them or have to euthanize them to to get enough sampling. And that, and that means that we have to euthanize a lot of rats to get a, a, a representative sample for evaluating amino acid digestibility. So the pigs has been shown to be very similar to to humans, and also there there has been um, regression equations that show the similarities between amino acid digestibility of pigs and humans. So that's why the pig is considered the best model when it comes to amino acid digestibility for humans. Gotcha. And I actually wanted to talk about one study in particular that you've recently done at the University of Illinois. Um, and this study, if I were a pig, would have been like the best study for me to be on because it looked like it seems like you fed burgers to pigs um, and looking at different amino acid scores of the burgers based on that model. And you had like a, a treatment with um, a, a regular you know, beef burger. And then you also seem to have a treatment with like a plant based burger and kind of comparing the two of them. So could you tell me a little bit about that study and how those treatments were set up and what the objective was there? Yeah. So actually, the pigs love it. 
when we fed them burgers, we have um, we had five different types of burgers. We had two different types of beef burgers, one pork burger, and one two plant based burgers. That it was the Impossible Burger that is made of soy protein, and the Beyond Burger that is made of pea protein. So in that study, we wanted to see what was the uh, this digestible and dispensable amino acid score, which is called DIAS, that is used for evaluating protein quality in this in, in, in human foods. That is the method that is um, recommended by the FIO right now. So we, we wanted to see the difference between uh, among the, these burgers. And in addition to that, we know that burgers are usually consumed with burger buns. So we, we also wanted to see what would happen with diet scores if we added burger bun with the burger patty. And also determine if diets would be additive in mixed meals, because that is really important that diets would be additive in mixed meals, meaning that we could calculate the digestibility in individual ingredients in a mixed meal. Gotcha. So what were then some of the amino acid scores that you saw with the real meat burgers versus those plant-based burgers? So for uh, we saw that for the 93% beef burger and the pork burger had greater uh, diets for people over three years. But when it comes to the Impossible Burger and the 80% burger, uh, there was... Uh, Similar amino acid uh, amino acid score, but the Beyond Burger was lim is still limiting in some amino acids. Gotcha. So my next question for you was about this term you've been using some off and on throughout the episode of DIAS, that digestible and dispensable amino acid score, um, and that score is not something that we typically use as often as swine nutritionists in the industry. So I guess my question to you is, what is this diet score and how is it used? How is it calculated and what are some of its limitations? So uh, diet is basically more related for human nutrition because we as animal nutritionists, we always formulate diets based on the digestibility of amino acids. And that's what we were trying to pass on the human industry because most of uh, nutritionists, they use protein as main value, main, main value of a meal, for example. And we know that we don't need protein, we need amino acids. So that, so the diet is used to, um, to demonstrate the quality of a, of a meal of a, an ingredient, for example. We, you, we basically take the amino acid digestibility uh, related to the protein and compare that to the requirement. But the diet is uh, only related to quality. We still need to sit down and calculate how much we need to eat uh, of, the, of a meal, for example. So I would say the animal nutritionists in that part are doing a better job than the human nutritionists. Yeah, that is a common statement that swine nutritionists love to make is that we know more about swine nutrition than we do about human nutrition. And that's because, well, mainly it's because with swine nutrition, you can just give the pigs one option of food and they'll eat it. But with humans, you, you can't exactly do that. Um, but yeah, we swine nutritionists are usually pretty proud to say that statement. Um, so my next question for you then is, so... You said you're finishing up your master's. Is this research that you just talked about, is this for your, your master's thesis then? Yes. Yes. Gotcha. So then my, my next question is, so for your um, PhD work that you're now approaching, are you planning to do um, kind of a, along a similar vein of research or what, are, what do you think are, are you going to, what do you think are the next steps for your research in terms of um, what you're going to do for your PhD? Are you going to continue along this using pigs as an animal model for human nutrition, or are you going to take a slightly different approach? Yeah, so I'm kind of continuing with that approach because we we determined that uh, diet is additive, and that is really important because we cannot measure all type of foods. So if, if diet is additive, we can calculate... Um, how much we will be taking in a mixed meals from individual ingredients. And that is the kind of research that I will continue going on, but with a different experiments. I mean, we already had different experiments with eggs, corn flakes, and cereal, uh, cereal milk. I'm also starting to work with uh, dog nutrition. So I'll be kind of 
working in the pet nutrition side and in the human nutrition side. And there are a lot of companies that usually work with pet nutrition, but they also work with human nutrition. So that's, that's the kind of pet that I'm going on now. Combining basic science with real-world facilities results in swine nutrition programs that deliver impactful, bottom-line performance. Hubbard Feeds is focused on helping you achieve your goals and make your life easier along the way. Choose a company that can match your appetite for innovation by visiting hubbardfeeds.com forward slash swine research. Awesome. Well, I'll look forward to seeing that research when it comes out when you finish up your PhD. But thank you again, Natalia, for coming on the show and sharing all your research with us. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.